Right here, I just want to give you a moment uh, to look at the OSD here. As you can see, I am on Beta Flight 4.3. I have my latitude and longitude out, uh, out here at this school. And uh, you can see that we have 11 satellites up there. Uh, and as we go proceed with the flight, it will continue to acquire. And uh, I've gotten up to 17 satellites. We have our uh, altitude down there and our amp draw and our cell voltage as well and uh, we are currently disarmed. I'm now with the throttle in the correct position and we will take off in three, two, one. We are now recording on the air unit. Look how smooth this is. This is with the o, new O3 U, air unit, my second one. I love, love how smooth it is. And there are no props in view. I've already used this battery, so I'm probably gonna have to come in and land soon. But I have Betaflight 4.3 on here. Uh, stock, stock, I had to change my rates. I had to do a little bit of difference on the dynamic notch filters. But other than that, everything is apparently quite Quite nice, quite smooth. I'm just watching out for these soccer players over here. I'm just doing some flights here, some turns, just to give an idea. Because every new build, just feeling it out. This is a new frame, it's the Apex 7 inch. Uh, I'll show some pictures at the beginning or end of the frame and the setup and my build. But I uh, took components from another 7 inch and uh, moved them over to this frame. It's a beautiful day today. I don't see any jello in the footage. Low battery. Yeah, I can't really punch it. I'm just cruising around here. So, uh, it's going to be a short flight. But uh, this is our first flight. And it's so far feeling and looking really beautifully and smooth. You should all be seeing that in this footage here. Very easy to control. Like I say, I, I used actual rates. So that was one of the major changes. It's the first, first build that I have installed the 4.3 beta flight. All my other builds are still on a 3.5 beta flight. All right, some initial thoughts on this Apex frame. This is the first Apex 7-inch frame that I have owned and assembled. Now, whether it is me, uh, but let me share my experiences with assembling this frame. Like I said, this is my first Apex frame that I have assembled, and I have assembled many frames. Uh, I have lost count how many frames I have assembled. So, when assembling this frame, uh, this was all relatively challenging. Putting this frame together took quite a bit of work, actually. Uh, it's not a newbie-friendly frame, in my opinion. Um, you had to actually put the insets, the nuts, in here as well, and, you, and there was no instructions. There was no assembly diagram. That's all I really needed is a diagram to see how all the parts are supposed to fit together. That would have helped immensely. If that was included in the box, I would have had zero problems. But as it is, I had to figure out from pictures, that there is nothing online, there's just a picture or sales picture of what the frame looked like, and from there I had to deduce which side of the frame or these plates are supposed to be facing which direction and therefore where to put and press the nuts plates into so that these screws can go into it. Uh, there was a lot of detective work, but in the end, uh, it all worked out and it did take a while, but 
uh, to the best of my knowledge in the pictures I will choose I will have either included at the beginning or end of this video will hopefully help future assemblers out on how the frame is to be assembled and the plates and how they're to be oriented this looks like a simple build from just looking at this but it is relatively complex much of the work much of the assembly is up to you so like i said it would be had been grateful if there was an assembly diagram like in some other other frame assemblies would have made the job a whole lot easier but uh anyway i have all hopefully helped you all out with the photos that i uh included along the assembly process having said that this frame is a stop frame uh it is very strong and sturdy and uh, an additional note that I am going to include in here is the fact that as of the publishing of this video, uh, if you are running the O3 air unit on here and you expect to have your props out of view, that's not going to happen. In fact, you won't even be able to install your camera in this frame as, like I said, as it stands today because the frame will not allow your camera to be mounted behind these standoffs here. It's just simply too wide. And this is what a lot of the other manufacturers of the frames are facing this problem as well. This was designed with the Vista in mind, not the O3 air unit as, like I say, the publishing of this video. So I printed, had these printed already and I, um, allowed the mounting of the camera of the o3 camera and also in doing so it allowed it to be mounted forward of its original place and tension here and that allowed as you can see the props to be completely out of view and as you could see in the video uh preceding this there was no props in view to me that's the most important thing since i'm using this as a cinematic uh drone I can and this is my primary camera which I may or may not use a uh, GoPro for this but what is the sense if this camera is doing such a good job so that was one of the main goals is to have the props out of view and this is the way I did it and there are SD files out there as well print these things up and I just mounted the camera here which also moves it forward well out of the view of the props of the 7 inch props so that worked for me uh, as for the weight of this frame, also be included down there with a the full all-up weight. It's not any heavier than my last build. It's probably 10 grams lighter. Um, so that's actually good as well. This is just, I was just running it with a uh, 1400 milliamp battery, just cruising around here to try it out. But of course, for long ranges, definitely has a space to mount a larger battery. So if you have any questions or any experiences with this frame, uh, please drop the comment below. I will be happy to respond and to help out. Like I say, I've included some assembly photos to help you, but this is really a beast of a frame and uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. So, uh, I, like I said, I also, I also will include the description of the, uh, in the description of this video, the, let's see right there, so hopefully it focuses, uh, the GPS. Uh, this I got from iFlight. And the reason why I directly got this from iFlight was because from the reviews of the camera, people were saying, hey, you're getting so many good satellites. How are you doing that? Um, so I went ahead and got their GPS they use on their uh, quads. And actually, it picks up satellites very quickly, even inside my room, which the other uh, ones I got from RDQ, I forgot the branding, did not do that. So I picked up three satellites in my room and I guess like seven to 10, you'll see in the video because I'll, I'll share the recording of the goggles and uh, it shows you how many satellites and it, it picked it up really quick uh, even though this is the first time it's been out here in this field. So I'm very impressed with that. Uh, so you can do that too if you want to, uh, but I think, I think uh, this GPS is really good picking up satellites, at least in my experience. All right, it's getting cold out here, and uh, I want to do some more testing, so, oof, why?